right. Welcome back to the Pulse of Willie and Al. How's it going today, brother? No, not too bad, man. Not too bad. Um, Going to get our first really hot stretch this week. Um, so I apologize in advance. My window is open. Uh, <laughs> so if you just hear people just yelling, it's keen. So, Maybe they want to yeah. join in the podcast. That's got to be what it is. So let them. All let right. <laughs> Well, guys, today uh, we are bringing you episode 44, uh, Give Me Some More. Uh, we got some fun stuff for you today, but before we, but before we jump into things, uh, make sure you go ahead and smash that subscribe button, go ahead and like the video, and uh, you know you know the drill, right? We're still looking for our second dislike that uh, Al and I have talked about quite a bit. We, we don't know who this person is, uh, but... Uh, we believe they are either Brandon Staley himself or a Brandon Staley lover. So uh, I wish they would just reveal themselves. Uh. <laughs> uh, to add to that, maybe uh, I'll say it right now. Brandon Staley is a terrible fucking coach. <laughs> That's the way we got to open it up, right? Yeah. Um, well, today, and I know this may ruffle some feathers, right? But today we are only going to focus on NFL because that's the news that's the most important that we have right now. Um, before we get into the fun stuff with the schedule release, I just wanted your opinion because uh, with NFL free agency, we had some signings, some retirings, right? Devonta Parker, he, he resigns from, resigns, he retires uh, from the Eagles, which is, uh, you know... I'm not sure I saw that coming, but it kind of does make sense. Uh, I, w I wasn't sure he was going to make the squad this year, even though they brought him in. Um, but just your your thoughts on that? Any Anything big for them? I know he was a New England Patriot for a while. He wasn't a very good one, so <laughs> there's that. Um, yeah. I'm going to be honest with you. I forgot that he signed with Philly, and I just assumed he was already out of the league. <laughs> so... Uh, you know, that's, that's, that's all I really have to say about that. Well, I'm kind of shocked New England didn't re-sign him, but uh, it would have made sense that he would have had a stint in Philly. He would have had to be Philly's third best guy. And then New England would decide to throw some serious cash at him. Uh, Cause that's yeah. who the, the free agents they bring in the third best guys on their team. So absolutely. <laughs> uh, the other one who was uh, arguably one of the third best guys, and I'm not sure that's really saying much considering the rest of the guys that were on the squad last year, but uh, Marquez Valdez Scantling, he signs with the bills. And uh, in my opinion, I think it's a pretty good signing for the bills. And the reason being is I see him kind of fitting that Gabe Davis role. I just think he's better at it. He's more consistent than Gabe Davis. And that's sad because Marquez Valdez-Scantling only gets three catches a game max, but they're all going to be deep catches. Whereas Gabe Davis was getting three catches every three games. You know, so in, in my mind, I, I feel like it's pretty good uh, considering there wasn't a lot left in terms of free agents, but I think it's someone that might actually help stretch the field for Josh Allen. Yeah, I agree. I think that like, and we'll talk about this when we talk about like our preview our for the season. I don't think it really matters what matters with Josh Allen. He had like kind of a diminished digs last year. And to be honest with you, like they still won like 10 or 11 games. Like yeah. Josh Allen is going to get you. It, it's the Tom Brady rule. Tom Brady will get you 11 or 12 wins every year mm -hmm. just by doing, just by being Tom Brady. Mm -hmm. And Josh Allen's going to do the same thing. Yeah. And to be honest with you, like, you know, good on them. Like, he was big for the Chiefs in the Super Bowl. Like, I, uh, you know, what was it, two years ago? He caught, like, the game. I was it? Yeah, I think it was two years ago where mm -hmm. he caught, like, a, a touchdown for him in the Super Bowl. And, uh, yeah, I, I, he's going from one good quarterback to another. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and you're right about Josh Allen. Very similar to Brady and the, the wins type type uh comparison there they just go about it in very different ways uh josh allen is j just plays with this like reckless abandon that like a toddler plays with right um and right. it's kind of awesome because he's he doesn't realize how big he is it's like <laughs> it's great watching him play but um all right let's get into the anticipated nfl schedule release all right so uh, we've been waiting for this, and I know, like, I, I had it marked on my calendar. I had it marked wrong, and then I had it marked right, and then I had it very excited because it was almost like they gave a sneak preview for it. They showed too much in the preview for the movie, 
But yeah. uh, we got a lot of cool stuff. So let's start out. I've got a few interesting questions for you about this. International games, right? We had the, the slate of, what, the six games that they're going to play internationally this year. What was the yeah. most intriguing international game for you? I got to say, and I think you and I are going to agree on this, it's the Brazil one. Yeah. A, it's a good matchup. B, what a fun location that's going to be. Yeah. Um, I, that's just going to be nuts. Uh, uh, the crowd's going to be nuts. That's and that's also just going to be a really good game. Packers Eagles, like, come on. Yeah, that, I mean, and that's week one, right? Yeah, that's opening yeah, that's, opening that's night, insane. right? Like, uh, is it opening night or opening weekend? I think it's opening weekend. Okay, yeah, and I just think uh, right, like, I think it's got the makings of a future classic, right? You've got a a superstar in Jalen Hurts. You've got what, what we think is going to be a superstar in Jordan Love. Um, and I just, I mean, I can't wait to see that, right? Brazil, their fans are crazy. Well, do you remember you know? that Monday night game in Mexico City when it yeah. was uh, Chiefs Rams and it was mm-hmm. like 55 51? Yep. Like, it, yeah. the international games sometimes are like the best ones. Right. Like, Unless it's New England and the Colts, which they could have both just stayed home. Right? Like, they really could have. Yeah. Uh, very God, interesting. Yeah. So. All right. Well, uh, I mean, that was short, right? We knew exactly what it was going to be. We kind of were feeling the same vibe on that one. But yeah, yeah. out of looking at the schedule, because I know you had a chance to kind of pour over it. I know I've been like sleeping, dreaming, eating this schedule for the last few days, just kind of rolling it through my mind, trying to process everything. Who do you think has the best schedule this year? <sighs> That's tough, because I think there are teams for me like I is it I think it's the AFC North. They play a pretty cupcake schedule for the most part. Um their their schedule is kind of sprinkled with some difficult teams, but like teams like the Bengals, like who finished last in their division, I I, I think are gonna I, I think with the team that they have and the schedule that they're gonna have this year, I think I think they're gonna they're gonna bounce back in a really big way. Mm-hmm. Assuming that Joe Burrow doesn't get sacked four hundred and eight times a game. Yeah. You know. Yeah, and as long as they can keep him protected, they should should experience quite a bit of success there. Um, yeah, I agree. They got to give him time. Have? For me, listen, I and this is just because of how kind of same thing, like how they finished in the division, the division they play in, a lot of that stuff. I think Atlanta really has like they've got the what's deemed to be the weakest schedule, and I, I kind of love these comparisons, right? Because like. They don't really mean anything, right? None of these teams yeah. have won any games. They're very different teams than they were last year. Yeah, we can look at it and predict. What is the predicting factor that they're using to determine this? It's really just basically the wins that that team had last year. And they're yeah. predicting wins on how many they're going to have this year. That's how they figure it out in terms of strength of schedule. But when I look at Atlanta, not only do they play in the NFC South, which is perceived pretty weak, right? Uh, they should have two kind of gimme wins against New Orleans and Carolina. So that gives them four on the season there. Um, Tampa Bay might be tougher for them. And I think they're going to have to really play them tough to be able to do that. Um, But I just look at the way they start the season and it's kind of difficult, right? Like Pittsburgh at Philly, then Kansas City. But I really don't think they play a tough team other than Seattle uh, in week seven or Dallas in week nine the rest of the way. Like yeah. I, I just I look at that schedule and I'm like, oh my god, this if Atlanta does not make the playoffs, and people could say what they want about Kirk Cousins, but if Atlanta does not make the playoffs this year, it's a crime. I I think too, you know who else has a really good schedule speaking of the NFC, mm-hmm. Green Bay. Green yeah. Bay has the makings, like are you kidding me? Like they they could sneak and win the division this year. They could. They have a pretty good schedule. Like the think, problem is that division itself is going to be really tough. I think it could be better than it has been in years past. And that's concerning. Yeah. Um, but with that being said, man, like look at what Green Bay did last year. They were awful at the beginning of the year. What didn't they start out the season two and six? Yeah. Yeah. And, and it was that Thanksgiving game against the Lions that turned it around. All of a sudden you're like, oh, this could be a team. Like we came yeah. out and I remember you just telling me Lions doing Lions things, but that's exactly what it was. Green Bay went up what twenty one nothing in the first quarter. Like it was, At, it was brutal. In Detroit's house, yeah, yeah in yeah, Detroit, it was wild. in Detroit. Yeah. So, um, and I I wouldn't be upset with seeing Green Bay do well. 
I, I really yeah. wouldn't. So uh, what about the the tougher schedules that you saw? <laughs> Jacksonville. Okay. Jacksonville. Here, here's their first four weeks. Okay. Mm-hmm. Ready? Miami, Cleveland, Buffalo, Houston. Yeah, that is uh, – that's tough. Um, that's – that you they could conceivably start 0-4. I wouldn't be surprised. You well, might be able to win either that Miami or Cleveland game. But, but see, Maybe. this is the thing. So, like, Miami and Cleveland, I think, both have better teams than Jacksonville. And this is the because those are all playoff teams that they're playing. My issue with that is, like, okay, so say they start out 0-4 and, and then Doug Marone gets fired. People are going to be like, uh, I'm sorry, Doug Peterson. I keep calling Doug Marone. Doug Peterson gets fired, right? Well, should he get fired at that point? Because you lost to four playoff teams. I, I, I just, I don't know. I, I think a lot of people, if Jacksonville starts out 0-4, there's no saying that they can't come back. There's a reason they play 17 games. But I don't know. Like, those are four very difficult games at the beginning of the season, right? Jacksonville's going to do just enough. They're going to finish 9-8. and eight. They're probably going to start slow. They'll come on strong at the end of the year. They'll probably just miss out on the playoffs like last year. And everybody would be like, oh, it's fine. And then that's the fate of the Jacksonville Jaguars because they're just not good. I, I don't think they're going to be a good team this year. I'm actually leaning towards them being the worst in their division this year. Um, and I listen to Tennessee's. Depends made on what you get out of Richardson from Indianapolis. That's yeah. a big if. Yeah, he's got to stay healthy. Yeah, but Indy's got a, a decent defense and like they can run the ball really well. So. I mean, they did that all they did last year with Gardner Minshew. So uh, I just, yeah. I don't know. I think Tennessee's better. I think Houston's much better, right? Like these are teams that all made big improvements. And like, what did Jacksonville do? Well, they let Calvin Ridley go to Tennessee and they signed Gabe Davis. Woo. Yeah. They did bring in Eric Armstead, who that's a man. Uh, and that's a going to be a problem for teams. But I just am not convinced like that defense needs more than Eric Armstead, right? I don't know. We'll we'll see. But for me, listen, the the brutal schedule uh, like one of them that I think's tough. I'm going to I'm going to tell you one that I think is tough. And then I'm going to tell you one that I think is just not fair. Um Houston, they play a lot of perceived to be good teams this year. So I think they have a difficult schedule and I don't think it's going to matter much because I think CJ Stroud does not shy away from competition. I love the way he approaches the game and I think they're going to be very good this year. Uh, but they have a brutal stretch towards the end of the season that features home at my home against Miami at Kansas city home against Baltimore. Now those home games are on turf, right in there. I, I, I mean, we could say turf, but I think it's grass it's indoors, right? They go to the cold of Kansas City. That is going to be a massive test. And I'm pretty sure, if I remember right, that's week 16. That's going to be a brutal game for them. <clears throat> I think those Kansas, that Kansas City and that Baltimore game, I think are going to be big, big show me games for Houston. Oh, yeah. I, I think, I, and I think those, like they're going to get up for those games, assuming they're not ravaged with injuries. Mm-hmm. And I think, in, I think we're not talking about this later on too. I think Houston gets a buy in like week 14, which I think could be really helpful for them the rest of the way in the, yeah, for that, like the playoffs and stuff. That's kind of scary to have buys that late, right? Like, um, yeah, it just, you're right. It is. That's the eighth bye week, the last one. Um, and Houston gets it that week. That's, I feel like that's a long season. You could lose a lot of guys before that, right? We could be talking about very different things by that point. But this is the schedule, and I know it's been all over ESPN, all over everyone's talking about it, right? But this one, I need to mention, right? The Pittsburgh Steelers talk about tough. My goodness, dude. Like, they have a a pretty much a cakewalk through the first 10 weeks. I, I mean, the only games that I saw that were kind of tough were Dallas and the Jets. Um, but both of those games are going to be at home, right? But weeks 11 yeah. through 18, let's, let's talk about this. Cause this is the definition of gauntlet. They go home to Baltimore, like home against Baltimore at yeah, Cleveland lost. at Cincinnati home mm-hmm. against Cleveland at Philly at Baltimore home to Kansas city and home to Cincinnati. I mean, Pittsburgh better go nine and zero into those games because if they don't, they, they, I mean, 
if they do go nine and zero, oh, say they could finish five hundred. Dude, Mike Tomlin goes nine and eight every year. Well, I like guess that. yeah, they won't finish five hundred, right? They finish yeah. at nine and eight, but like, dude, that's it's just insane, right? Like, I know Mike Tomlin's going to figure it out, but I just look at that and that's just absolutely brutal. Like, who pissed in the NFL league offices Cheerios from the Steelers, right? Like. I've never, I can't ever remember hearing about a team having a, a, a stretch like that. That's just brutal. Yeah. Mike Tomlin is the new Jeff Fisher, just a better coach. <laughs> Always going to finish 500. Never will lose his job. Uh, though Jeff Fisher didn't always make the playoffs. Like, no. like Tomlin figures out a, a way to, uh, it's, yeah. it's insane. Um, I just, I, I don't know. Like, uh, Maybe we're looking at Justin Fields by that point, and maybe the Steelers are an unbelievable team, and they just blow these other teams out, right? Like they add, they made some good acquisitions in the off season, right? That I know, and you're gonna laugh when I say this, but Arthur Smith being an offensive coordinator again could have a good impact on this team that loves to run the ball, right? Yeah. Um, but I I don't know, man. Um, <laughs> Can we talk real? Can we talk real quick? I just I want to rant for a minute about why the hell are the Jets getting six primetime games in the first eleven weeks? You know exactly why. why. You know exactly why, man. Why? It's because their fifty-six-year-old quarterback uh, that tore his Achilles three plays into the you know before anyone could even take a breath uh, last year. They want to. They feel like they owe him. They feel like they owe him. I don't know if he makes it through Week One this year. He has to play the 49ers yeah. in San Francisco. Yep. Yeah, that's going to be a really rough one, man. Yeah. Um, They better keep him protected. I just, I can't, I just can't watch another year of like every other game being a Jets primetime game where they're just ass. Like, yeah. I, know that happens. yeah. I, I just can't. I just yeah. like, it, make it, this stop already. It could make be rough. Stop. I mean the yeah. only the only other matchup I really think is going to be good in Week One as as we talk about it, like the Rams head to Detroit again for rematch number two. I really like that. Um, I I don't think the Rams are going to be good this year. I'm going to say it now. Okay, all right. You're just because you're going to tell me that like not missing Aaron Donald's going to be like Aaron Donald not being there is not going to be an impact. Oh, I I think it will be. Yeah, it definitely yeah. will be. But I. I Matt Stafford's a good quarterback, and if they can keep him protected, which they've they've put a lot of emphasis into that, they run the ball well. Uh, and yeah. Sean Sean McVay's a good coach, man. He gets he got a lot out of guys that no one thought much of last year. Um, I I don't know. I mean, it, right? It remains to be seen. Um, but uh, week two, looking into that. Now, there's some awesome mashups that come here, right? Like. I really like the matchup of Indy at Green Bay just because if AR comes back and is that dude, him against Jordan Love, that's going to be an awesome, you know, just a a point fest yeah. of going back and forth and back and forth. And like, who's going to be the young guard taking over here? Like, who whose league is it, right? Um, yeah. Though I think you may like the second matchup I have here better with Pittsburgh going to Denver. Um, Steelers country. Let's ride. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Russ is turn, turning back to Denver to cook. Um, what What do you think is going to happen there? Uh, that Pittsburgh's probably going to get food poisoning if if Russ is cooking. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, and and like it's going to be kind of the meeting of Sean Payton and and uh, Russell Wilson again. So yeah, I to me it's it's there are two games a week too that I really look forward to. Um, Burrow Mahomes, that's always yeah. a classic. Yeah. Um, God, again, you can't no, even write that like in a book. It's just every time you watch it, it's magical. The, the, every it feels like all they keep playing in Kansas City mm -hmm. for some reason, like which is funny. But then also, I think uh, Bears Bears Texans is going to be yeah. good. Yep. Because it's an it's an early test for Caleb Williams. Um, you know. Uh, and Houston's defense is good, and I don't necessarily know that the Bears have a good offensive line, so this will be a really good test for them. Yeah, uh, uh, especially with the way Houston plays defense. You know Demico Ryans is, is going to have them ready. Uh, he's going to try 
uh, to rattle Caleb Williams. And it's going to be very interesting because teams are, he's going to get every team's best shot. Oh, Hollywood boy, this and that number one pick teams don't care. They are coming after you. So let's yeah. see. Do you, can you handle it? Are you really that cool? Um, or can you not? Um, yeah. I mean, I think uh, the last matchup that I kind of like there, Kirk Cousins going to Philly, kind of an interesting one. Um, we'll see what happens there. Is he going right? to be healthy to start the season, Kirk Cousins? Uh, yeah, he's good. Now? He's good now, I think. He's throwing and stuff. They were talking about that. But uh, let's okay. get into training camp. Let's see how it looks. And Yeah. I mean, it was fairly early when he got injured last year. But – and they were yeah, even talking true. about Rodgers, like, tore his week one and was coming back by the end of the season. So I don't know. I I, I think he'll be good. But yeah. all right, moving into week th- three, we've got Chicago and Indy, right? So you've got Caleb Williams, Aaron, uh, Anthony Richardson. I really like the the look of that matchup. That could be very interesting. And we could be looking after week three with Chicago being three and oh. I don't think that's going to happen, but uh, there's a possibility of that, right? They got to get yeah. through Houston. But, the, you know, running through the AFC South, they're going to face some some tough teams there with uh, Tennessee. Even even Jacksonville, I think, is is not a pushover for them. Um, no. And we'll find out what Chicago's made of. But Baltimore at Dallas, big time game in Big D. First big game of the season for Dallas to blow to blow. Can't wait. I you Can't know wait. you know what's gonna you know what I I love the thought of as I was looking at this on the calendar is Jerry Jones is going to be in that stadium watching that game and he is going to see a quarterback on the field that he wish he had on his team. And that is something that, could've, that could've drafted him. yeah, uh, a lot of teams could have. So when, every time you play against him, you're like, Ooh, could have had that guy, you know, yeah. a lot of teams could have. So it's going to be very interesting. Um, moving into week four, we finally get this matchup, right? Uh, Denver at the Jets, right? So Aaron Rodgers finally gets revenge on Sean Payton. Maybe. Uh, for Nathaniel Hackett, his comments about him. Uh, we'll kind of see what happens that with that. It seems like a game that where, like, two blind squirrels are just going at it. Yeah. Like, that's... I don't think it's really going to resemble football. But this is the uh, thing. This is the thing. The Jets play really good defense. We're not sure what Denver is on offense yet. I could see Aaron Rodgers going out and trying to throw five touchdowns. Uh, I, I could see that. Or I could also see the Jets just trying to run the ball all day on Denver and not let them get the ball at all. Like, just play keep away from them. Um, But we've also got some other good matchups. A rematch of the divisional round matchup in the NFC, right? We've got Philly at Tampa Bay again, right? Philly has to go to Tampa Bay. So we'll see what happens with that. Maybe uh, Philly has their their head on straight this time. Uh, But also Buffalo at Baltimore. Uh, Josh Allen and the the misfit of Island Toys, right? They head to Baltimore to take on LJ and company, which is going to be uh, th- that is going to be an awesome game to watch. Yeah. I just I imagine it's going to be a lot of back and forth, a lot of uh, talk coming up into that week about who's the better quarterback, this and that. Um, but uh, week five, we move into uh, Tampa Bay at Atlanta, which we kind of see how Kirk Cousins stands up against a division winner. Not sure how that's going to, how great that game's going to be, but hopefully we get a good idea through the first four weeks as to like what we can see. Because remember, we'll be a month through the the season at that point. Um, Unless Atlanta gets better defensively somehow, which, you know, they wasted a first round pick on a backup quarterback. Um, I, I I don't see, like, yeah. you could tell me they're going to be 0 4 going into that game, and I'd be like, all right, like, I wouldn't even blink. I'd be like, uh, eh, tracks. Like, yeah. Yeah. We'll see. And Tampa Bay might, might just be chugging along and steady, right? Doing what they're doing. Um, yeah. they seem to, to, they, they got most of their pieces back. They're ready to go. Um, then you've got, this is going to be another just marquee matchup, right? Buffalo at Houston, uh, where Josh Allen heads to Texas, right? Um, you know, that it, it's going to be very interesting. Like I said, we're, we've talked about what, this is the fifth week, and we've already mentioned Houston a bunch of times. They're playing some yeah. tough teams out of the gates. Um, Dallas Buffalo has, a, Buffalo yeah, has a tough road schedule this year. Yeah, they do. And the Ooh. strange thing about it is none of the games that they play at home seem to be uh, against good teams are late in the season. 
So they yeah. don't get to, you know, play off of the, hey, we we play cold football really well. They don't get to play that in too often. Um, then we got Dallas at Pittsburgh, right? Hopefully mm-hmm. two great defenses, you know, like, like T.O. would say, get your popcorn ready, right? <laughs> hopefully it's going to be a good one but uh uh but this is also an important week because this is the first bye week so detroit tennessee philly and the chargers are going to be on bye week this week so very interesting to see how that kind of breaks down uh you've got two really good teams uh and then two could be good teams uh going on by in the Mm -hmm. first first set there um then we follow that up with uh cleveland at philly right and I, i think i'm just this is one that I don't know. I feel like people think Cleveland's kind of boring sometimes as a team to watch because they play good defense, they run the ball. That's kind of it. Joe Flacco breathes some life into the passing game, but like I'm super intrigued by this matchup of Cleveland at Philly. Uh, just because like Jalen Hurts, I want to see how he does against an elite defense, right? Yeah. When you, you, you could be very, very good, play behind an offensive line that's great, all of that stuff, have a great running back. When you have Miles Garrett running after you, throw the playbook out. Uh, you better yeah. run faster yeah, than luck. him. Um, I think that's going to be an awesome matchup to be able to watch. Um, but I, I think, too, the, the thing that worries me in Cleveland is like, Chubb's coming off that torn ACL. Yeah. That's a two year recovery, really. Like, I know he's going to play this season, but like, he's not going to look like himself till next season. Right. Same and thing then, like, with, yeah. Same thing with Brees Hall, then, right? Last year. Yeah. Yeah. And then what do you get on Deshaun Watson? You know? That was, wow. Those were my big arguments about it. Like, is Chubb going to be ready? Can, can uh, Deshaun Watson stay healthy? It just doesn't seem like he's able to do that. So, um, but this week we also get Detroit at Dallas, uh, which is, you know, what we kind of wanted last year. Remember, this was the game last year, right? Detroit and Dallas. That yeah, like Dallas, Dallas snuck it out. Yeah, yeah, it was kind of like a an unsatisfying thing. So maybe Detroit's able to get their revenge on them this game. Um, but Buffalo at New York. I mean, okay, like maybe Rodgers is still healthy by then, but we'll kind of see. Uh, yeah. but, but some other good teams on, on by this week, right? Kansas city, the Rams, uh, Miami and Minnesota, um, kind of waiting to see what the Rams and Minnesota are going to be this year, but we assume Miami and Kansas city are going to be good. Um, m- moving forward, you know, Houston at green Bay. I feel like that's going to be a good one that we're going to have, uh, Philly at the giants. Saquon's homecoming is going to be that uh, I'll tell you, the giants are going to have a twice a year reminder of how they messed around and found out question. How many times this year do you think the giants will lose 43, nothing? Is it more than two? Because I think the answer is yes. Um, okay. Can I ask a clarifying question on that? Absolutely. Um, 43, nothing or lose by 43 points or more. I'll give you either or. Okay. Because I think the answer is still the same. Because I think it could be at least two. Um, Golly, the and, Giants are going to be bad. Yeah. Like, it just, and it's too bad like, because they. The first... Yeah. Oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say they drafted neighbors, right? Like, he's going to come in, he's going to be good. But, like, I just, I don't know. Like, I feel like there's still like five or six pieces on offense, five or six pieces on defense away from getting what they need. Like they let their safety go to green Bay. Like, I, I don't know, man. Like it's, it is, yeah. That might've been the nicest way to say a team is going to be ass this year. <laughs> I'm trying to be <laughs> polite. Right. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think, I definitely think Saquon's going to run all over them uh, when they meet and he's going to have, if you an, don't think he's putting 200 yards. You've got another thing coming in that game. I, I think Philly is going to make it their mission for him to have, elite level games against the giants and that's or i could see the complete opposite right like he just comes out and does nothing for those games and they just beat him other ways right like i i I don't know uh then we get the super bowl rematch this week right kansas city at san francisco that is going to be awesome uh yeah brock purdy gets another shot does he get the best of kansas city this time you know we don't we don't really know, but by week seven, I feel like this do you, is... Do you think San Francisco will know what the overtime rule is this year? 
Do you think they'll know what that that is? Maybe uh, they should brush up on it. Yep, I say. Well, correct me if I'm wrong, but it was different in the playoffs than it was the regular season. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I I don't think it's going to go to overtime in this game, but if it does, we're getting we're getting extra football, and I will not complain about that. And San Francisco better mm -hmm. know the overtime rules in the regular season and the postseason this year. Um, Sounds like they should brush up on them. Just yeah. Saying. Um, Dallas and, and Chicago both get their rest this week. They get a bye week in week seven, uh, moving to week eight. So we get, uh, Philly at Cincinnati. And I, the reason I think this one's awesome is this is who I picked to be in the Super Bowl last year. Uh, I'm very tempted to pick them again. Don't let me pick the Jets this year. Don't. Don't. If I talk to you at some point during the summer, uh, and I'm like, Hey man, the Jets might be good this year. Like, I just, I want you, I want you to take your hand and just slap me, <laughs> like right in the face repeatedly. Yeah. Baby powder, no baby powder. I don't care. Just okay. Slap me. Just be like, hey. Oh, like no. the videos, like the the slap slap fest. Yeah, yeah. I'll do yeah. it. I'll do yeah, it. You just need to tell me stop it. Like okay. hit me with a rolled up newspaper or something. Like just, just, just tell me to stop it. Yeah. Uh, I I will. Yeah. Don't pick the Jets. Um. All right. You know Won't the punishment now. Uh, we yeah. also get uh, Dallas at San Francisco, which is kind of interesting because uh, Dak's got to travel to the Bay with the boys and, and see what they can do against Purdy and the Niners. That's going to be a, a very interesting game because this I see, and tell me if I'm wrong, but this is the type of game that Dallas plays very well. And we start to talk about Dallas as the the king of the NFC and this and that, like if they win this game and then they continue to win and then lose in the first round of the playoffs again. Like, um, I think Dallas is actually going to be worse this year. I, like, I don't, I think Dallas is going to be probably like 10 and seven and not make the playoffs. Wow. Okay. Yeah. It, it, this game is going to really prove that because like last year, San Francisco absolutely kicked the snot out of Dallas. Yeah. That game. Yeah. And I think they're just going to do it again. Like, well, it, and it's possible with the AFC North being so much better. It's possible that Dallas does not make the playoffs. It could yeah. really, it could really happen. Um, ooh, like yeah. I think Philly would be the only team that's coming out of that division this year. Okay, so. that's fair yeah. enough. Um, well, we are at the almost the halfway point, right? Week nine. Uh, it's a, it's an important week, I, I think, because in in week nine we start to get at the end of October and early November. And this is when things start to get kind of cold. So you've got yeah. Houston traveling to the Jets. I think that's a great matchup. Uh, that should be awesome. We'll get to see kind of how Houston plays in the cold. Um, Miami at Buffalo, right? We know, like, we're probably looking at another pretty good Miami team in September and October going to Buffalo and then getting crushed by Buffalo. Um <laughs> Yeah, I, I feel like it's going to be the same thing. We're going to be talking about Miami can't beat good teams. Um, Detroit at Green Bay, that's got an awesome. That's just an awesome matchup. Uh, could be the changing of the old guard, right? Uh, and and Jordan Love saying, "Bro, I'm I'm here now. This is my division." Uh, Tampa Bay at Kansas City, we got the Super Bowl Fifty Five rematch, which is is going to be interesting. Um, and then we got Pittsburgh and San Francisco, right? They they're on their bye week. Uh, do you think Pittsburgh's going to be good this year? Because I don't. Like, I know that Mike Tomlin will somehow win nine games, and I'm not sure how he's going to win nine games, but, like... Yeah. I, I don't know. I I honestly think their schedule is so difficult that I think this might be the first year Tomlin doesn't finish over 500. Uh, wow. I, I need to do more research. I need to kind of see what happens in training camp. Uh, but I... I'm thinking they'll be better, but I still, in my mind, I think they're the worst team in that division. And yeah, I just do. They might be. Um, right. Yeah, it could be really tough because the other teams are just better than them, right? They're better teams than Pittsburgh is. Now, Tomlin is able to get a lot out of that defense. He got Queen to come over from Baltimore. Uh, they drafted a lineman in the first round. Like they're they're ready to go, but I still feel like quarterback is the main thing. I'm not totally convinced for them that Russell Wilson's going to do it or Justin Fields is going to do it for them. 
Um, Insane. But uh, week 10, we get another matchup, right? It's a uh, just a, a tough Thursday night football game for both teams, but Cincinnati at Baltimore uh is just going to be a that's going to be a tough game we get a lot of good divisional games this week right philly at dallas um th- and this and i hate to say this because it's only week 10 but this could have end of season implications for those teams yeah. uh it, it really could uh we get and it also just all, it, always in the nfl the divisional games are the most important like, they are there's a lot of times in the week the last week of the season it comes down to that and like yeah it, it and then it comes back to man i'm glad we beat them in like week eight yep yeah so can't let those get away no. um we also have detroit at houston another game with stroud right like uh, where they're gonna have to prove themselves again like i just like i said before they're just they face a very difficult string of teams this year teams that are playoff worthy or were in the playoffs and good teams right like you yeah. They're really going to be tested this year. So, uh, and I think really they're just a victim of their own success, right? That's why they're playing these teams. Um, uh, yeah, I think for both Detroit and Houston, like, I think there's going to be a big target on both of their backs this year. Yeah. Like, and it's, and with Detroit, I think it, we'll talk about it in the preview episode too. Like, that loss really hurt them in the playoffs last year. Like, that's a loss that, like, haunts you for a while. And, like, it's difficult to come, come back, back from. from yeah, yep. really difficult to come yep. back from. So we'll we'll see how they respond. I mean, they've reloaded, but we got to see more of it. Their defensive back room is completely revamped, and they've added a ton of talent in there. Uh, so let's see what they're able to do with it. Uh, th- this is actually the fifth bye week. So we've got Cleveland, Green Bay, Las Vegas, and Seattle out in week 10. Uh, moving on to week 11. Uh, we get Green Bay at Chicago. Now, this is the first of the two meetings, so we should start having an idea as to what what both of these teams are by that point. Um, though it seemed like Green Bay was just heating up at that point, right? <laughs> We're, yeah. We didn't know what to expect. But uh, we got Baltimore at Pittsburgh, and like this is, this is football, right? A hard-hitting game in the cold. Um, but this is where Lamar Jackson starts to come on. Right? Like end of November, December, and January. His record is unreal how good they are. So yeah. maybe this is where they're able to do it. They also have the mountain man, the avalanche killer, right? The 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 unbelievable runaway freight train and Derrick Henry on their team now, who just seems to come alive at the end of November. It's like, oh, winter. I, th- I think on one of the podcasts they say, "Oh, winter in Vermont." Okay, Derrick Henry's going to be yeah. running the ball. Um, yeah, so I- I'm excited to see that. But we also get another great matchup, which I know you're going to love: Kansas City at Baltimore. And like, this is a game that I think everyone has their eye on. Like, if you had to pick one game out of the season that you're like, that has big implications for Buffalo, I'm not sure they're as big for Kansas City. Uh, but we are going to find out a lot in that game. And I wonder if Xavier Worthy catches like three touchdown passes deep uh, against Buffalo. We will see. Yeah. Um, Houston at Dallas, right? Who rules football in Texas? Probably Houston. <laughs> yeah. I, I was talking yeah. to, I was talking to John about this the other day and I just said, dude, you need to switch. He's like, I- I'm thinking of it. <laughs> so it's uh what a traitor. Yeah. Jeez. I'll tell you, I wouldn't feel bad for He stuck it out. It's been brutal. Um, it's been brutal, but he's stuck it out. He's been a good fan for a long time, but man, they, they just, they're, they're killing him. So, uh, this is the six by week. We've got the giants, Arizona, Tampa Bay, and Carolina. Uh, and then we move into week 12 where we get San Francisco at green Bay, right? We get a nice little playoff rematch and, uh, the Packers are going to see if they can really hang or if it was just uh beginner's luck that they had yeah. with, with the 49ers the first time. Um, Baltimore at the Chargers. Just the reason I put this in, just a, a matchup of the brothers, right? Like, they've already met in the Super Bowl before, right? But this right. is going to be an interesting meeting for them where John, I think, has the upper hand because he's got a good established team and has for a number of years now. Jim being the new coach in the NFL again, right? Or second stint. 
what is he able to do? What is he able to figure out? And can they outsmart each other? And will they invite each other to, to Thanksgiving after that? Uh, maybe not, right? <laughs> So maybe we'll see. Yeah. Um interesting bye week this week because we got a lot of teams off. Atlanta, Buffalo, Cincinnati, uh New Orleans, the Jets, and the Jags. Um week 13. Get your turkey ready, bud. This is uh we got a Thanksgiving Day bash, right? We get Chicago at Detroit, the Giants at Dallas, which that could be one of those 43 nothing games you were asking for. Uh, Giants at Dallas is the game where I will for sure be in a turkey coma and sleep through most of that game. Yep. Yep. And then we've also got Miami at Green Bay, which hopefully you come out of your coma and wake up because that could be a good one. Um, oh, yeah. Well, that's second dinner. Yeah. yeah. Second dinner. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and then the Friday game, which I think could be an interesting game. Uh, just because around the holidays, it seems like teams don't always play the way they're supposed to. Things happen that yeah. shouldn't. Uh, but Las Vegas at Kansas City could be interesting um you also this is part of the gauntlet right pittsburgh at cincinnati round two uh we could have a i'd like to note this is the only time that las vegas will make this list yeah of matchups we're potentially excited to see yeah because nobody wants to watch the raiders yeah just As to quote to quote you earlier willie they are about 12 or 13 players away yeah i um Man, I want them to be good, though, because I like Antonio Pierce. I really do. Uh, I just I don't know if they uh, you need a quarterback in this league and I they don't have it right now. Um, they've no. got Gardner Minshew and Aiden O'Connell, and I just I don't think either one of them are it. Um, uh, we've got Philly at Baltimore. That's going to be uh, an awesome one. And then San Francisco at Buffalo is that just sounds to me like a hard hitting some guys are going to get hurt that game type type game right yeah um <laughs> it's thanksgiving yeah. day weekend right like honestly and it might be josh allen yeah I, I hope it does it i hope it's not but i want to see one where like they they have like that sneak quarterback option where he meets bosa and like knocks bosa over and i don't know if that can happen because i know bosa is a huge human being but yeah. Josh Allen would just be like, oh, like I could imagine them both running into each other, both falling over and getting up and be like, man, you're kind of big. Both would just be like, hey, man, hitting the quarterback is hard. Yeah, it is hard. <laughs> All right. <laughs> then we move into no buys that week, actually, which is uh, interesting with it being Thanksgiving. Um, week 14, though, we come back. It's the last bye week. And it for me, this just... In an 18 week season, this just seems kind of late. Like this is this should be playoff football in fantasy, right? Yeah. But instead, what you're gonna get is week 15, 16, 17 for playoffs, and you're gonna have guys coming back from a 14 week, uh, like the week 14 buy. I'm not yeah. sure I like that. Um, a lot of teams are gonna be trying to hope that they're gonna get into the playoffs for fantasy, and I, I know the NFL doesn't care about that, but I do, right? Um. So well, I'm going to win our guillotine league this year. So you like, better. that's not, not going to matter. You better. So, um, so. But some interesting games this week, because we start talking about playoff implications in the NFL, right? Uh, Green Bay at Detroit. Very interesting. Definitely playoff implications. Uh, the Jets at Miami. And one thing I wrote about this is one of these teams is not going to make the playoffs after this matchup. Now it may have already been decided before, these team two teams meet, but one of these teams for sure, if they're both close in record, one of them will not make the playoffs going forward. Um, just because I, yeah. I, I think it's going to be difficult for both of them to get in. Um, Chicago at San Francisco. Listen, Caleb Williams gets tested again. Uh, and this time against a very, very good defense. So uh, I don't know. If, that... if Caleb Williams hasn't gotten hit, hasn't been hit hard yet. That's the game where he's going to learn what it's like to be really hit by somebody. This is the thing. And I'll, I'll say it like, I want to see him succeed, but he better have his coming to the NFL moment long before week 14, because if it happens yeah. this week, it's going to be very, very bad for him. Uh, or he better learn how to slide. <laughs> yeah. Man. Speaking of guys that don't really know how to slide Cincinnati at Dallas. Uh, <laughs> um, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, 
I I think, and I know we I wrote notes about this before, but I was thinking both of these teams could be fighting for their division. But as I think about Dallas more, I have concerns about their team and kind of all the way through. But I think Cincinnati, especially in that division, could be fighting for the 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 winning uh, like the the number one spot in that division. And I yeah. think they could go in with on a mission to Dallas and get that done. Um, they may still be close at that point. It may not be wrapped up by week 14, but I think Burrow is going to be on a mission this year. Um, I also saw uh, that, I, that I really liked. Uh, we had, um, I'm sorry, eighth by week, Denver, Indy, New England, Washington, Baltimore, and Houston. So for those of you playing fantasy football, there's some good players on some of those teams, maybe not the first four, but Baltimore and Houston are definitely players. Like you will be drafting those players and hoping uh, you better hope that they put you in a good position to win because at that point it may be too late. Uh, they'll be on bye week that week. But I'm still in the mode that the Patriots were good are good in my brain, and I know that they're not. But for a minute, my brain's like, "Hey, man, fuck off." There's some good players on the Patriots, and then I quickly ran through the roster and realized. That in fact there are not any good players <laughs> to play for the New England Patriots. Yeah, my bad. It's kind of tough. <laughs> they've got some, but it's scarce. they're all on defense. Yeah, well, yeah. they've got Ramondre Stevenson too. He's he's all right. So, um, Boy, week... all right's being generous. Yeah, right. I know. Well, week fifteen gives us some fun matchups, right? We got Kansas City at Cleveland, big test for Mahomes, uh, but could be really good for them before the playoffs, right? Uh, getting into that playoff mindset, playing against a very good defense who, face it, when we get to the playoffs, you're facing good teams. Um, this is a good test for them to have because I think Kansas City is going to win that division, um, but I think this will be a necessary test for them. Uh, you also get Miami at Houston. Um, both could probably be, be fighting for playoff spots. Um, Buffalo this will be peak Miami. Yeah. This is a big game for Miami that they will lose because they're Miami. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's let in. Uh, I like this matchup with Buffalo at Detroit because I think I love my notes for this. Dan Campbell shows that a lion is tougher than a bill, and I just like well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just I mean nobody messes with a lion, right? Um, I do. Uh, Grandma's boy, right? <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Um, also, you get Pittsburgh at Philly. You get the interstate rivalry. I think that's going to be a good game uh, for both of them. Um, then we move into week 16, right? Again, Cleveland at Cincinnati. Can we get a clinch in the, the AFC North? We're going to have to see. Uh, Houston at Kansas City. It's like we're getting playoff football Yeah. three weeks before it's supposed to. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, uh, Pittsburgh at Baltimore, right? Like Baltimore's gonna, it's still gonna be a tough game for them at the end. But remember, this is the times when Derrick Henry and Lamar Jackson come on, right? Like that's what they do. Yeah. Um, and then Baltimore it, needs to remember though that they they can run the ball. Yes, because like they, they forgot about that last year in the Kansas City game. Yeah, they better. Be, they, uh, so, I I think that's why they went out and got the running back to to try to do that. Now, if he's too old, we're not going to see much of that. But hopefully, he's able to stay healthy because I want to see what he can do on a good team. I really do. Yeah. Um, then we've got San Francisco at Miami. Very interesting one there. Uh, to to kind of close out. But uh, the last two weeks are are very interesting, right? Like so, Christmas Day. Interesting day because Netflix is going to be hosting the games, right? Uh, I'm still curious who they're getting for announcers for those games. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I yeah. like the – they're not going to bring Brady over. They can't. They don't have the money to do it, right? Um, yeah. Well, I'm not going to say that, but he's got the deal with Fox, so probably not coming over. Um, but for the matchups, we get Kansas City at Pittsburgh and Baltimore at Houston. Uh, which I love that Baltimore Houston game, uh, a lot. Yeah. Um, and Houston's schedule. You were, you were right earlier. We were talking about Houston, the end of the season, boy, that is did we talk, schedule. did we talk about them every week? Like I, I, I try to be, I try to be diverse about it, but man, like Houston is playing a good team almost every single week. It's, it's really a lot for them. It really I is. I do worry with Houston though. There is now a full year of tape on CJ Stroud. Mm -hmm. And I I hope that uh he can make adjustments. 
That's that's my I, own. I think he's going to. I, I I'm I'm really excited for what he's able to do. Um, I like him a lot. But yeah. we also get Detroit at San Francisco, which is going to be just a great. I hope this game is not irrelevant. I really hope that. I hope that both of these teams, maybe the winner of this gets the number one seed or something like that. Uh, you know, I don't know, but I really want this game to matter. Um, yeah. With it being week well, seventeen, Detroit, they've got to exercise some demons because yeah, they they definitely wolf. do, and they get the the second shot at it. Um, also, like, and then moving into week eighteen, right? Like Miami and the Jets. Uh, my question is like, is Miami going to have anyone healthy after this three game stretch, right? Like San Francisco, Cleveland, the jets, like three of the top defenses in the league. Like is, is yeah. Miami going to have anyone that's n- not hurt at that point? Uh, well, I think Tua will be on his uh, 15th concussion of the season. Well, so, um, he stayed healthy yeah. all year last year though. He wasn't the issue. Like they, they had so many problems with running backs and wide receivers getting hurt. Like, uh, and their defense just, fell apart man like it yeah they didn't bring back christian wilkins that was the biggest mistake they could have made but yeah and miami didn't address that really either so no we'll they, they tried They're to actually... plug it with some holes but that's that's yeah. it so um but then we also get cincinnati at pittsburgh uh and it, it kind of raises the question we, we also have cleveland at baltimore so i'm going to ask you the question do we get three teams again from the afc north this year no, I think you get two, mm-hmm. and I think it's I think it's Baltimore and Cincinnati. Baltimore and Cincinnati. Yeah, me too. Me too. I like that because I and if I'm wrong, great. But I just don't like. There's been enough tape on Deshaun Watson now that he just hasn't been himself for a while. Right. Yeah. Just I agree. He's like, he's got to really turn it on and prove it this year because he's you know he's been guaranteed his money. Uh, now you got to. You got to produce, right? Uh, yeah. We need some production for that. So let's see what happens. Um, but yeah, that's the schedule, guys. We roll, rolled through the entire thing, all 18 weeks. I know it took a little bit longer than we usually take, uh, but had some good stuff we wanted to be able to cover for you guys and, and kind of let you know exactly where where we are, what we thought of these games. I'll tell you, I can't, I can't wait. Uh, I do. I cannot wait for the beginning of football. It is... Whew, it's uh, it needs to happen. So, um, but before we wrap up, we got our trivia question from last week, which uh, you asked, "Who was the last person to steal a hundred bases in a season?" Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Because we were talking about Ellie De La Cruz and how like he has a shot at a hundred this year, mm-hmm. and uh, yeah, the last guy, Vince Coleman, the nineteen eighty seven Cardinals. Mm. Another also, guy that wears red. <laughs> What's that? Another guy that wears red. Yeah, yeah. or wore red rather. Um, and then we've got a new trivia question for you guys. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Rafi Devers last night, we're filming this on uh Tuesday. So last night being Monday night, um, he hit a home run again in his sixth consecutive game. There are three players, um, that have the record, um, for hitting a home run in eight consecutive games. Name those players. Ooh. So three possible answers we could have. Okay. Yep. All right. Yeah. Uh, and we will be back next week uh, with that answer for you guys and some new trivia as well. Uh, next week, we'll dive a little bit back into baseball because we need to catch up. There's been some stuff going on. We need to talk about it. Um, yeah, I'm wearing the t-shirt in shame today. But uh, How's that brace? Hey, just stop. Stop it. Stop it now. Um, listen, <laughs> just stop it. Uh, but well, good. Like thumbs up, thumbs in the middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talking. Well, uh, listen, okay. I watch enough. It's always sunny in Philadelphia that I should be a Phillies fan by this point. But uh, yeah, I'm hoping the Braves are are going to get it turned around because uh, they have good stretches and bad stretches, and I just need more of the good. I need some of the guys that are good players to to start doing it. So, uh, but we will be back next week. Hopefully, we got some more football news for you guys um, to be able to keep you going and stuff. Anything else you wanted to cover today, Al? Nah, man, I think we're good. All right. Well, listen, we are going to wrap up. Uh, thank you so much, bro. I love it. Another one. We we got number 44 in the books. So yes, nice sir. job. And uh, listen, I will catch you soon. We'll take care. All right. Love, love you, you, bro. Peace. Peace.